I also like the animation for uh, for consuming souls. That uh, when he pulls down his cow, there's that little wave that comes out in the light going into his mouth. So here we see combat with Raziel. Uh, it's a little bit different than combat with Kane. First off, we have the new Reaver, which looks pretty damn amazing in my opinion. Oh, it looks better than getting Soul Reaver too. Yeah, no kidding. It's sort of got the width going to it that it had in Soul Reaver 2, but it also establishes more that it actually is a sword. You can see like the tilt of it and everything. Combat with Raziel is a lot more aerobat uh, acrobatic looking. It's not necessarily so. It actually seems combat plays almost identically the same. His just animations are different, which causes some different time issues. Yeah, I always enjoyed fighting with Kane a little bit more. Or fighting yeah, I agree. It, it's mostly due to the fact that, to me, Raziel has a lot less tools. His TK is much weaker, and the Reavers don't really do much for you. Also, I think it's neat that the Sluot eat each other to stay alive. You see? Obedience brings prompt rewards. Yeah, the funny thing is if you eat a slew on that's eaten another, you'll actually get credit for both kills. Convenient in that section. Two for one. Where do you think you are going, little soul? So this section is a little bit tricky due to the fact, like, personally it's one of my favorite sections in Run any of the Legacy of Kane games. It's really interactive, very fun looking, and this Brace honestly should not be possible because I'm pretty certain that climbing isn't supposed to work in the Spectral Realm, but whatever. We'll just live with it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really love how dynamic this section is. The big problem with it is the fact that the camera and jumping just don't want to work with me. There's plenty of sections where you'll just suddenly jump into a wall like that, and you can just end up screwing yourself from losing by losing control. You will never you find yourself in the pit, or you'll either find yourself falling into the pit, or just the stuff I catching up with you. This exactly. Another funny thing is right here, you can definitely miss this jump. I've done it plenty of times and the cutscene just doesn't trigger. No! Clearly my escape had not been anticipated, or my benevolent master would not have expended such efforts to prevent me from going. And if my departure displeased him, then that was a victory, however small, for me. Over here we're going to find our first arcane tome for Raziel. In the spectral realm, water is as thin as air, putting this opening far beyond my reach. But once I found my way into the physical world, I might be able to swim up there. Yes, Raziel, we know how swimming works. It stands as thin as air. Sorry, I missed that part. So, I guess here we could talk about the Spectral Realm. It seems like they put this crazy blurry filter over everything instead of actually changing the geometry around too much. Yeah, the uh, looks like they just put a fishbowl filter on it. This door would only open when fitted with an appropriate artifact. But to use such an object, I would first have to find a way back into the Material Realm. The interesting thing about this effect is the fact that 
It looks great when you're looking at it on video. When you're playing, it can be really, really, really distracting. I, I distinctly remember getting a headache more than once from this. Yeah, that's completely understandable. Just everything being turned into three of itself and splitting out towards the sides it gets a little grating after a while. Although it's awesome with the pair of 3D glasses that you get from the theater. At last, I discovered a conduit into the material realm. I would finally escape the spirit world and take one step farther from my tormentor. <laughs> Did you think to receive the same favors after your rebellion as before? No, Raziel. I have no need for you to enter the physical world, so no conduit will be granted. You serve me adequately as a wraith, and a wraith you will remain. So, my restraints had not been removed, only loosened. I would not be held prisoner in the Spectral Realm. There had to be another way. I just remember that when he took away the points, I actually kind of was really happy, because I was like, wow, those look really dumb when I was watching the cutscene. And uh, I'm glad I don't have to deal with them. I like how the uh, how they changed the animation for moving for the bars, though. As I emerged, I was granted a vision of what I would become if I did not escape the spectral realm. For these two were agents of my master. Hunting the lost souls that struggle to escape the endless twilight of the underworld. So these guys, I I still don't remember what they're called. Um, again, I'll have to look it up later. But basically, they serve to, like vampire race to the game. Only uh, you can't eat them when they're done; they just disappear. Yeah, they just fade off into existence. My master's plan for me was ominously clear. Like these mindless hunters, I existed only to fuel him with souls, siphoning their energy to feed him and his wheel of fate. I had to break these bonds, but I still possessed my own will. So, we've caught up with Kane and Raziel. Next time we'll be joining Kane in the Seraphan Stronghold, and this time it's going to be a longer section of just Kane, then it'll be followed by increasingly long sections of Raziel and Kane and so on and so forth. In the end, I don't know what I'm saying here. It, it blends together seamlessly well near the end, which is good. Yeah, and it becomes really fun in the upcoming sections. It's nice to see the balance between the two stories. Anyways, join us next time for Kane and the Seraphan Strongholds. Hopefully the last time we have to see that place. Amen to that. Alright guys, we'll catch you next week. Alright, see you next time.